It's been a year and a half since Apple introduced the Touch Bar, a dynamic OLED strip of virtual keyboard keys that are unconfined like standard keys. Apple promised it would revolutionize the keyboard experience by bringing dynamic controls to your fingertips. Did it achieve that or was it just a gimmick? Let's find out. Optimally, all the keys are context sensitive, changing not just appearance, but size based on what app the user is in and what the user is doing. The old key functions aren't gone. If you hold down the function key, the touch bar reverts to a standard strip of function keys. We once said that the touch bar will take some time to mature and find its best uses. Out of the box, it hasn't really fulfilled its promise, but if you own a MacBook with one, it still has a bit of potential, which we'll cover in just a bit. As a filmmaker and video producer, the idea of a touch bar that gives quick access to shortcuts was intriguing. Anything that could speed up my workflow is a welcome addition. We gave Apple the benefit of a doubt and tried our best to incorporate the touch bar, but it just didn't stick. After all this time, my touch bar use is literally limited to display brightness and volume adjustment. In Final Cut Pro, you have buttons to use as shortcuts, but none of them are new or innovative, and each one of them can be accessed faster by using a keyboard shortcut. On the plus side, we did learn a few more shortcuts that we didn't know about previously, but then we just looked up the keyboard commands for them since that's faster. My favorite video editing feature of the touch bar is seeing the timeline and being able to scroll through it. But for maximum efficiency and speed, you're better off just sticking with a keyboard plus a mouse or a trackpad. The touch bar does have its uses for non-editors, but they are few and far between. Safari does have some nice shortcuts with open tabs, but given that you're already looking at the screen, it's not that much more convenient. As we said in our 2017 MacBook Pro one year review, which you can check out by clicking the card above, the touch bar generally doesn't give you much more options and a lot of times it gets in the way. Oftentimes, the touch bar forces users to navigate an extra menu to find certain settings, like adjusting the keyboard backlighting or skipping audio tracks, both of which were right there before. As we've said before, the touch bar seems like a way to make the Mac easier for iOS users than helping existing Mac users. Personally, I'd prefer Apple just scrap it all together and lower the price of the machines, or if they are serious about touch, implement a full touchscreen display. This would also make the support for iOS apps and macOS that Apple talked about in this year's WWC much easier. I think the most useful section of the Touch Bar Edition is on the very right hand side, and that's Touch ID. Even though I don't use it often, since my hands rest on the keyboard and I could type out my password quicker than using Touch ID, it definitely is useful for most people. With that said, I'd much rather have Apple replace it with Face ID. It's quicker and more secure, like we've seen on the iPhone X, and having used Windows Hello in our MacBook comparison to the Dell XPS, it's much more convenient. I've gotta say that the touch bar really is mediocre, but if you already have one on your Mac, it could definitely be put to better use. Regarding potential, a third-party app called Better Touch Tool allows users to completely customize the touch bar with a lot that you can configure and even run Apple scripts. It's free to try out for 45 days and we'll leave a link in the description. Another one is 2Touch, which isn't quite as robust, but leverages Apple's accessibility options to give the user a few more choices for the touch bar. Even if Apple did add a lot more customization options to the touch bar, my honest opinion, and this is one coming from a Mac lover, is yes, it's a gimmick. And it almost seems like Apple feels the same way since they only offer it on the MacBook Pro. If it really was an innovation, I would have thought that they would release a keyboard with the touch bar built in so that any Mac user could reap the benefits of this revolutionary keyboard experience, but they don't. This means that the touch bar is only accessible to a limited amount of Mac users. And since it's on a pro machine, many of the users will have it in clamshell mode without having access to the touch bar anyway, further minimizing the adoption of this tech. Even though I'd prefer the touch bar to be scrapped, in all likelihood it will stay. And at least in the short term, Apple will continue to offer a lower end MacBook with function keys. So what do you think? How has your experience been with the touch bar and does it actually benefit you? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.